When we hear the word mining, what do we think of? We think of jewels, of fancy floors, high-tech products, steel plants, growth and development. What we don't think of is poverty, deprivation and human rights abuses. Across India, from the diamond mines of Madhya Pradesh, the lignite mines of Tamil Nadu, the stone quarries of Rajasthan and Maharashtra to the coal mines in Jharkhand or Meghalaya, we come across some of India's poorest and most marginalized children. These we call the mining children. Children ignored and neglected. Not just those who are working in the mines, spending their days toiling in hazardous labor, despite laws banning them from this dangerous work, but also others being affected by mining in a multitude of ways. We have no ways of providing exact numbers. The number of stones they break, the number of debts they repay, the number of nights they starve, the numbers that have lost their parents or watch them dying each day with tuberculosis, the numbers who are victims of rape and exploitation but their stories are real. Mining displaces them from their homes, lands and forests that they knew as their own. Malnutrition sets in as loss of agricultural land means impacts on diet and food security. Living in makeshift housing close to or even on the mine sites with no access to water or sanitation, their health worsens as they suffer from respiratory and other illnesses. Impact of radiation in uranium mining is by now well documented. Malaria levels are high in mining areas across the country, with stagnant water providing the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. And water pollution from mining is leading to a range of illnesses, particularly in children. Being children of minors is not easy, as their parents succumb to TB, silicosis and mining accidents from their years of toiling in dusty mines, children are forced to drop out of school and follow their parents into this work. If mining brings development, why is it that those directly affected have no access to it? Leaky roofs, schools without teachers. After five years at school, many children remain illiterate, while their counterparts in the mining colonies for the officials march ahead. Scheduled areas are being thrown open to multinationals for private mining, violating the Constitution of India. Communities are thus being deprived of their livelihood, forced to migrate and lead unprotected and insecure existence. The paradox lies in the fact that neither the mining industry nor the mining administration is legally responsible for protection of their rights. The mines ministry's fundamental job is to mine. And so the vicious cycle of poverty, indebtedness and ill health continues, with children forced to follow in their parents' footsteps leading dangerous and miserable adult lives at a young and vulnerable age. Is this what we want India's development to look like? A lot depends on political will, public accountability and bureaucratic transparency. A lot also depends on a nation's conscience. Let us not forget, whilst we enjoy the benefits, the fancy flaws, the pretty jewellery, unlimited power supplies, these mining communities and their children are paying a hefty price.